In the last video, we looked at using images and tables in our thesis. In this video, we are going to look at adding a bibliography to our thesis. To do this, we are going to use the bib latex package. This involves creating a list of sources in a separate file called a bib file. Let's create this file now. We need to choose a name for it, and then we need to save it as a .bib file rather than a .tech file. Now every time we need to reference a source, we can cite it in the text and then fill in the source details in the bib file. First we'll look at filling in our .bib file, and then we'll move on to discussing citations. To add a new entry to our bib file, we need to first tell bib latex what type of source we are referencing. We do this using an at symbol, followed immediately by the source type. Then comes an opening curly bracket and a citation key of our choice, followed by a comma. We then need to tell it all the details it wants for that particular type of source. We do this using a list of keywords, each followed by an equals sign and the corresponding information in curly brackets. Items in the list are separated by commas, and then we close the list with a closing curly bracket. Each recognised source type has a list of required details which we must provide, but we'll often want to give more details. For example, for an article entry, we need to use the author, title, journal title, and year or date keywords. For an online source, we need to use the author or editor, title, year or date, and URL keywords. And finally, for a book, it's the author, title, and year or date keywords. Here's an example of what they might look like filled in. All of the information about the recognised source types and all the keywords you can use can be found in the BibLaTeX documentation. Now let's return to the main tech file. To set it up for a bibliography, we need to load up the BibLaTeX package using the use package command. Also in the preamble, we need to specify which bib files we want to use by calling the add bib resource command and entering the file name in the curly brackets, including the .bib extension. Now let's look at citations. To cite a source in the text, we use one of the bib latex citation commands. The simplest is the cite command, which prints the citation without any brackets, unless you are using the numeric or alphabetic styles. We'll discuss styles a little later on. Another one is the parencite command, which prints citations in parentheses, except when using the numeric or alphabetic styles when it uses square brackets. There are more citation commands available to you, which again can be found in the documentation. The citation commands in BibLaTeX also give us the option of adding a prenote and a postnote in as arguments. A prenote is a word or phrase like C that is inserted at the start of the citation. A postnote is text you want inserted at the end of the citation. To add these notes in, you use two sets of square brackets in the citation command. If you only open one set of square brackets, it will assume the contents of the brackets is a postnote. So if you only want a prenote, make sure you still open the second set of square brackets and then just leave it empty. Now to actually get the bibliography printed in our thesis, we use the print bibliography command at the end of the document. By default, the bibliography and citations use the numeric style. To change the style, we pass more arguments into the use package command in square brackets. For example, this specifies the alphabetic style. And this is the author year style. Another thing we can change here is the way the bibliography is ordered. For example, this sorts entries by year, name, title.
while this doesn't sort them at all, but displays them in the order they are cited. More information about the numerous styles and sorting options can be found in the documentation. This concludes our discussion on adding a bibliography. In the next video, we'll look at customising some of the opening pages.